Hello viewers, Super GT here. This might just be one of the best combinations we've had in Gran Turismo 7 multiplayer since the game came out. It's the Mazda Roadster touring car and we're racing it around Road Atlanta. This track was newly added into the game uh, not too long ago and it was always going to be Daily Race C and I was wondering which car they'd combine it with and we've gone for this, the Mazda Roadster touring car which always produces very close racing. Now let's take a look around turn one. I started this race in 16th. I decided to not qualify and just see how it pans out from the back of the pack. And if this first corner here is anything to go by, or actually the second corner, it's going to be rather close and quite frenetic. And often that is the case when the Roadster Touring car is the car of choice. Now, unfortunately for this Frenchman here, I'm just going to spin out and pretty much end his hopes of any decent result in this one. Now the Roadster Touring car, it's let's say a slightly slower Group 4 car and the thing about it is that you can race it very closely indeed. There's someone else off on the far left there. Meeting the American Barrier, you might have spotted them. Um, but yeah, this car you can race it very very closely. It's a thing you'll notice. This is lap one, I'm only five seconds off of the lead. You can see immediately there's a train forming of all of the cars where slipstream becomes incredibly important and pack racing is very possible in these cars and therefore you know this race turned out to be really really good fun very frenetic quite chaotic at times but a very good combination overall now in this race so far immediately moving up into p11 really courtesy of just benefiting from other people crashing and making mistakes so that's five positions gained after one lap. It's a 12 lap race. No pit stop is required. So it's a straight dash from here to the end. And we're just going to try to overtake as many cars as possible. Someone off on the left hand side. Straight into the tire wall. And that's another free position. So now we turn our attention to SRL Reflex. Let's try and uh, reel him in. Going down the S's, back up the other side. And then this corner at the top of the hill here, quite tricky to get right. I'm a little bit wide. Is that going to be a penalty? It looked like it could be. Quite tricky to judge the track limits there. I've got someone on the left hand side courtesy of not taking that corner quite right. And there it is. The half second penalty. Probably the easiest place on the track to get a penalty. As it's very easy just to run slightly too wide. Carry a bit too much speed. Before you know it. There you go. Half second penalty. And it's going to be served down this back straight which is it's always going to harm your momentum halfway down the straight tucked up behind the Turkish driver here and there we go serving the penalty moving back down to P12 but thankfully we can just remain in the slipstream and that's crucial in this race if you can just stay in the slipstream with the car in front you're going to gain at least a couple of tenths per lap yellow flag what is going on here there's someone slow a couple of cars slow in fact in front we're going to try to meander our way through the kerfuffle as we come down the hill into the final corner, flat out this uh, this final corner. Very fun corner, actually. Up into the slipstream of the uh, car in front. Looking up the inside, are we going to be able to get this move done? There's a car wide spinning. Contact is made between the three of us. And unfortunately for the car in the middle, going to end up facing the wrong way. But that's two positions gained. Later on in the lap, as you can see, uh, as you can see just in front, still incredibly close between this massive group and I go flying in way too fast and then I back out and unfortunately I think I would have initially I triggered the initial cause of that crash there by going in a little bit too hard and then the guy got pushed wide by the other but it got triggered by my late braking which was not ideal I'll be completely honest there hold my hands up into the first corner though up the inside of the Belgian driver up into P8 so lots of carnage, half of it caused by me, but we are moving through the pack, trying to do our best here. As uh, we round out lap number four onto lap five, you see the two in front fighting quite uh, close in towards turn number one. And who is going to end up in front? It's going to be the Spanish driver. You can, you can carry so much speed through that first corner when you get it dead right. And as you can see, as a result of doing exactly that, pulling right onto the back of the two in front, and this time I'll try not to break too late and kill one or both of them. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? I think let's try not to murder as uh, let's, let's try to murder as few people as possible. 
think that's a good mantra to go by in life. Now heading up towards turn number six, penalty for the Spaniard up the inside here of the Turkish driver. And it seems as though we've overtaken each other many times. Oh, goodness, my, uh, goodness me, the Spanish driver just pulling onto the grass. And I'm up into P6, although this is not a good position to be in at the beginning of this straight. Because you are so vulnerable to the slipstream. I am four tenths in front of the car behind. They're going to put into the slipstream here. And I am a sitting duck. I don't have anyone in front of me to get a slipstream from. And therefore, as we head down towards the braking zone, there's not much I can do about the cars behind. It shows you the importance of the slipstream. You can gain about half a second in one straight, courtesy of it. Uh, so I'm going to lose the position back to seventh. And this is where the, the race becomes incredibly tactical. As I said, it was, it's, it's always going to be a close race, is this one, the Rose uh, to Touring car. But you have to make it um, a, a tactical one to an element, uh, with the element that you have to try to pull away from a pack, but they, you know, they, have the, they have the benefit of the toe, so it's hard to do that. And then you start fighting and then you start losing ground to the cars in front. So it's a really tricky race to manage in that situation. Sometimes it's almost better to either fully work alongside each other and slip, uh, slip stream past each other or just remain behind each other and let the car in front just do all the work. Um, but unfortunately here, the third option is just get a penalty and drive like an absolute fool. And yes, obviously that's, that corner there, the, the one at the end of the S is my, my arch nemesis. And it's been a very topsy-turvy race. I wouldn't say it's my finest performance. Uh, thus far but it is enjoyable and i hope you're enjoying it watching it I'm guessing you are because you're still here but well maybe you're not maybe you're watching it and you're absolutely hating it maybe you're just really hating this video like completely um but then i'd recommend just clicking on another one um but more carnage here as uh, uh, someone else uh, breaking quite late into the chicane so we're going to gain another two positions back again so lost of position being gained and lost. We're losing a lot of ground to the cars in front. Um, but we're going to try and wrestle back P6 from the Belgian, if we possibly can. Into what's turn one, carry the speed in, off the brakes, back on the power, let the car run wide, back to the right, get a nice angle into this braking zone here, where you're braking whilst turning, which can be tricky. This car's fairly stable, although I noticed that I would say the, the steering was a little bit pointy and it was actually quite hard to manage at times. Coming up into my worst corner, it's rewarding when you get it right, but um, can be very punishing when you get it wrong. It looked like it was wide and, and, and definitely was the driver in front getting a penalty. And all I have to do now really is capitalise on this moment by getting as close as possible and making the most of the slipstream. Looks like P5 isn't too far in front, although without slipstream it is quite hard to gain. Let's see what we can do. This, this guy here is about to serve the penalty at the line coming up. There we go. Up into P6, sixth place. We all know this is the best position. So in, in fact, I should probably just try and stay here. Now, 11 seconds off the lead. I suppose that's not too bad given I started last and have been punting people about and getting penalties. And so this bodes well for perhaps when I set a qualifying lap and try to start towards the front. Now, I wasn't able to escape the shackles of the cars behind. The Belgian here, um, proven to be quite a formidable opponent and coming back past me, I was not able to shake him off. Um, so you can see him there on the outside. I just had the inside line though, try to force the issue and retake the position. And here, thankfully, as a result of that, the guys behind began fighting as you can see punting each other wide onto the grass and this is the moment I needed to try and slip by and escape they were fighting quite strongly here into towards turn one and these are the moments you have to capitalize on when you notice the guys behind start fighting think, okay right I need to take these corners perfectly to try to get away get out of slipstream range and try to shake them off and I think I've done that 1.3 seconds the gap now to the guard uh, the guy behind called RG Barry interestingly now through here that's the that's the line we want that's the line we want perfect 
Unfortunately, I was not able to catch up with P5. It's going to be a P6, which we all know is a great position to finish in. And um, there, we, there we go. Sixth place in Super GT. The iconic duo is back. Now, I decided to set a qualifying lap, as you can see. Uh, faster lap here, 27.4, but I knew it could go quicker. The ghost in front is a 27.1. And we're going to try to get as close as we can to it. So following through the first corner, carrying as much speed through here, as we mentioned, getting a nice angle in towards turn two, over the kerb, carry the speed through. This car, you know, is, is fairly stable, doesn't have the hugest amount of power, so you can get on the power quite early, carry a lot of speed through the turns. You might have to slide the car a tiny bit. A little bit wide there, having to hold off the power slightly, as you can see the ghost just pulls away slightly, maybe a tenth or half a tenth. In towards turn six, on the brakes just before the white line, carry the speed in, let the car run wide. And this car, uh, sorry, this corner here is quite deceiving. Put the car in, back on the power, use the kerb on the exit for a better angle through the turn. And on the back straight, you're seemingly here forever. Not the fastest car in a straight line. 138 miles an hour as we hit the brakes in towards the chicane, making the most of the track limits on the first apex and the second and the exit. Straight line, the crest over the hill, back down the other side. Final corner is flat out, so just take the nice, efficient line through here. And it's a 27.2. Not a bad lap. Could definitely go a little bit quicker, but that put us on second place in the grid for the second race. So with one TCS, we pull away from the grid. Let's see if we can just try to remain in second, immediately pulling over into the slipstream of the car in front. And... It's not really possible to go for the move. I mean, it, not impossible, but we're just going to tuck in, try to stay behind, and see what we can do from here. To settle into the race, sometimes you know, with the slipstream, as we see, as we've seen in the video so far, it is sometimes ideal to be the car behind and wait for the moment to pass. Now, unfortunately, uh, here. And uh, throughout the course of this video, I've not been driving perfectly, and I smashed Heaton. 93 off there and i just want to take this moment here to deeply apologize for sending heaton 93 heaton or heat zero n underscore underscore 93 into the shadow realm i am deeply sorry and i know that that moment there completely taints this entire race that's about to happen but it was a good race so i was a, i was kind of um and ah in about whether or not i should upload this one but the remainder of this race was so good that I kind of had to, albeit with a distinct apology to Heat 0 n underscore underscore 93, um, who I, I don't know, I'll have to do something to, to make it up to you if you're watching at some time in the future. And I am instead going to have a great race with 1990Z, the car behind, who actually remained behind on the straight, but um, as we head over the crest down towards turn 12, I think it's turn 12, the final corner. Once again, just making up corner name, uh, corner numbers and hoping that you don't know. But maybe you do know, but I think it's turn 12. In towards turn 1 though, this is definitely turn 1. Um, 1990Z uh, Z goes through, and I've tried to fight him back here, but I'm not quite going to go for it. Now as we head into the S's, it's my imperative here that we don't push him into the Shadow Realm. As uh, that would, you know, we've already done it enough and we shouldn't really be doing it at all. And obviously it was uh, it was unintentional, but um, yeah, it happens. Heaton went all the way to, uh, uh, to the back of the pack and he's actually going to make an incredible recovery in this race, so fair play. And their qualifying that was actually really quick, a 27.0, um, which I was not able to replicate. Now here, onto the back straight, this is a good position to be in, about three tenths behind the car in front. You get a really good momentum with the, with the toe, and given how long the straight is, you can see here, eventually it kicks in, and you can go for the move, which we're going to do here. I actually go into the back of him slightly, <laughs> which is, kind of sums up my driving in this race, to be honest. In towards the chicane, though, on the brakes, over the first apex, and then through the second, not on the power as early as I'd like, but not too bad. On lap number three then, drifting a little bit wide, maybe 
I'd say three pixels beyond the track limit. But uh, let me know how many uh, how many pixels you counted because um, I think it's three, but it, it might have been four. Anyway, that penalty got served and 1990Z went back through, as you can see. Now I tried to trail him as possible, uh, tail him as close as possible. Didn't punt him off here. Kind of went wide on his own accord. Made a bit of contact on the exit. But I go back up into the lead. So we were swapping places quite a lot, which is really quite common in this kind in this kind of race, given the slipstream. Unless you escape the slipstream, you are just going to keep overtaking each other, back and forth, back and forth. Now I was aware of that, and the the Austrian driver in third was slowly catching us back up. And I felt like uh, we should probably start working together and not keep overtaking each other because we're losing a lot of time. So as you can see here, I just decided to not go for the move. I probably could have gone for that move, but decided better of it. Let's just sit behind and wait. And as you can see, down the back straight, I thought, okay, let's use our slipstream to advantage by pushing the guy in front. And uh, the gap actually did go up slightly until I made this mistake, as you can see. Uh, unfortunately what that did is it uh, allowed the driver in front to get out of slipstream range and I just made that mistake I think that one was half a pixel and uh, it's a half a second penalty and what that did was it increased the gap to the leader to 1.4 seconds actually 1.5 seconds and by lap 8 the Austrian driver had caught back up with me and this was not good news I, I wanted it to be a, only a two horse race for the lead but now it's going to, well, hopefully eventually be a three horse race. Heaton's actually back into uh, P6. Uh, so that's a solid recovery after I punted him back to P15. Uh, getting back to actually no, P5 now. But here, this is where we have to be quite tactical. We've got four laps remaining. And I still have my sights set on trying to win the race. So it might be a good idea to try to sit behind this guy. He's actually set the fastest lap of the race, so he's got pace. There's no doubt about that. It's 27.7 from this Austrian driver in front. So I could perhaps just sit in his slipstream and use his speed to pull up to the back of the leader. In fact, that's not going to matter because, as you can see, the leader has a one-second penalty. And therefore, we are going to get very, very close indeed on the back straight. Now here... Patrick actually goes very wide and gets a half second penalty. I thought about going for the move here and thought better of it. I'll stay behind. They've both got penalties. So this is going to be very interesting on the back straight in just a moment's time. Through this corner, very tricky corner to get right. Oh my goodness. He almost lost control of the car there and I had to back off slightly, losing a bit of momentum here onto the back straight. But let's see the result of these penalties being served back in the slipstream, then back out of it. So one second being served in front, 0.5 uh, served there. That's enough to put us back into the lead of the race. So here we go then. Uh, three laps remaining to try to win this one. In honour of Heaton 93, uh, the, the faithful departed who I killed, um, who's actually now in P6, but was up to P4 at one point. Here we go then two laps remaining can we do it this is the hard this is the hard part now this is where it really matters and it's always in this type of race where slip dream is so prevalent and so important that sometimes being in front actually isn't the ideal place to be because there's not much defense you can have against strong slipstream so let's see how this one plays out through the left of turn five just making sure we don't drift wide and go into the penalty zone and as we uh, as we approach turn six you see the driver behind approaching very close he goes for a move i didn't actually realize this at the time so i pinch him against the apex and not realizing he was there and then here i just drive very wide not not a good corner at all and we're side by side now in fact he's going to get ahead and take the lead of the race with about one lap or just over a lap left to go Swerving from right to left to try to break the toe. We're going to tuck back in. Is it going to be enough to get this move done back into the lead of the race? Down towards the chicane for the 11th time. Covering the inside. I'm looking for it. And pinching against the apex is very close between the two of us. And that is the great thing about the Mazda Rosa Touring Car. The fact that you can really 
go door banging with each other. Um, perhaps some of the door banging was a bit strong throughout the video, but some good close racing here. On the final lap, looking for the inside move. Can we get it done? Quite an awkward corner to go narrow into. And I'm not really able to do it. 1990s with a very good line on the outside. Good car control to keep that one uh, from spinning. And he's retained the lead here. Uh, coming down the S's, lap 12 of 12, the final lap of the race. Patrick has actually dropped off behind, courtesy of getting a penalty uh, a few laps ago. So it really is a two-horse race between the two of us here, making sure we do not get a penalty there. And I was thinking of going for a move here. You see, he covered the inside. I didn't actually want to go past here anyway. So through these two corners here, just managing the gap to the guy in front, actually trying to stay slightly away so the wind come through the apex and on the exit, I've got a nice gap here, about three tenths of a second, which is kind of perfect. From here, we can maintain a good gap, but then slowly reel it in as the slipstream becomes stronger. Pulling out to the right hand side, 1990s defending the left, uh, mindful of the, the inside of the chicane coming up, but I've got more than far enough ahead going into the chicane on the brakes, into the apex, Parking it on the second apex to prevent the switcheroo. Are we successful? Yes, we are. Dropping down the hill. And I think that's his last opportunity to go for a move. Distinguished as we come through the final corner. It's going to be a race win. There it is. And this is actually the moment really where it happened. Because I noticed the guy behind was pulling off. And I knew that he wanted to go for the switch back. So I drove deliberately a little bit slow here on the apex. Nothing he could do couldn't really switch back there prevented it from happening and that was the moment the race was won really um so rest in peace to heat in 93 do apologize for murdering you uh, if you're watching this in the afterlife but there's another video on the screen right now for your viewing pleasure thank you so much for watching i will catch you next time goodbye